This is the Valley's original morning magazine show, ABC 15's Sonoran Living Live. Coming up, she's been a hairstylist in Scottsdale for decades. And now, she's talking about what life is like behind the chair. It is very interesting. She's sharing her new book with us. Coming up. Imagine for a moment the stories you hear working at a hair salon, one in Scottsdale. Well, this morning we are hearing from a woman who has been working as a stylist for literally decades. She doesn't look like it, but she has for nearly, uh, I want to say it's like 40 years, 30 40 years. years. 30. Hilda Villaverde has written a new book. It's called Blow Dry This, Stories from Behind the Chair. So good morning, stylist for 38 years, mm -hmm. 39 almost. Almost 39. Wow, welcome to Sonora Living. Thanks for coming and sharing some time with us. Thank you very much for having me. Well, I want to start things off by reading the introduction because I think this absolutely gives our viewers an idea of what you write like. She says, my name is Dr. Hilda Villaverde. Over the past 30 and rich, rewarding years, I have attended hundreds of weddings, birthday parties, bar mitzvahs, funerals, new moon rituals, drummings, divorce, celebrations, seances, and some ceremonies so strange that I'd rather not admit that I attended them. I've heard thousands of stories, confessions, lies, promises, and excuses. I've asked for, been asked for counsel, prayer, money, sex, and help in every imaginable avenue of life. I am a hairdresser. So that certainly it sparks my interest because you do, you must mm -hmm. hear so much and you decide mm -hmm. to write a book. I did. I've had some very colorful clients over the years and I've decided, you know, we always hear people say as a hairdresser, I think I'm going to write a book someday. Someday I'm going to write about that client. And I decided, why not? And so it took me two years to put it together. Well, it took me 38 years to put it right, together. Right, right. You had to have the background for right. it. But within the last two years, I started writing, and it just got better and better, and every story just got better. And so I think that when you read it, Stephanie, you'll see I've got a little mixture of everything in there. Well, it reminds me a little bit like, you know, chick literature, because yeah. it's a quick read. Yeah. And it's humorous. You have such humor and just spunkiness in, in your approach to writing it. Thank you. And that must kind of mimic what you've seen in the chair. Were you afraid at all that maybe some of the characters in your book would recognize their stories? Well, what I've done is that I've, what I, is this a work of fiction? I have to say that it's a work of fiction. Some of the stories, all of them have been inspired by clients. And some clients, initially they said, I hope I'm not going to be in there. I hope I'm not going to be in there. But once <laughs> the book came out, they said, am I in there? Am I in there? Am I, am I in I... there? Well, and now they're looking for themselves. What is your favorite themselves. story in here? Is oh there one goodness. that you got, if you, if you were, you know, being tortured and you had to pick one, <laughs> <laughs> what would it be the one that you squeal out before you lost your life? Okay, there is a, the second story, and there was actually my first story, and it's titled Make It Red. And it's about a woman whose name one. was Betty. And she really inspired me. There was something about her. She was one of those, hair, uh, those clients that walk into the beauty salon, and she just wants to train me, and she'll show me how to do hair. You read and a quote from that. Keep yeah, telling, keep and telling she more. just continued to come to me. This was the some of these clients still come every week. Not not too many of them, but she did. And uh, the ending of the story is so poignant and it was so touching that I think that that's my favorite story, my first story. Bummer, I can't find it. But she walks in and she basically oh there it is. She walks in and she says. Uh, she says, I need a new hairdresser, and someone has recommended you. They said you're good with color and style, and I'm here to give you a chance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the kinds of things that you can sit and talk all day with a stylist who has those kind yeah. of stories. Yeah. What I like about this, too, is you have little snippets. So this yeah. is a very easy read. You can sit down. I mean, in 30 seconds, you can get a little something yeah. out of it. Yeah, you can. Now, um, I would imagine, though, over the course of all of those years, you kind of do probably have to offer counsel to people because they sit in your chairs for hours I think, and they go through life's yes, yes, dilemmas. I, yes, and I, I have a great story about that. I have uh, clients who come in and they'll say, Hilda, I don't care what you do with my hair. Do what you usually do. But here's the real challenge that's going on in our lives this week. I can relate to that. Yeah. I've sat down yeah. in my stylist chair before and I've said, yeah. do whatever you do. But mm -hmm. you know what? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. Right. You know, and then I'll, you know, <laughs> just lament about something going on in my yeah. life. What is it about people that makes them feel safe? I don't know. What yeah. is that? Well, I think it's because you're not in one of those positions where you would be in front of a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And there's something about wet hair and about someone touching your hair and playing. Don't you just love that? And it's soothing. I do. And then you feel comfortable. Then all of a sudden... Your inhibitions kind of go think away. So. Mm -hmm. I think so. But, um, or it's the cape. 
The cave? You think it's the cave? <laughs> <laughs> I actually was fed a line by my producer and I thought it was funny, so there, yeah. I used it. Yeah. But it is, that, that is true, there is something about it. So have you taken that opportunity um, over the years to, to, to offer counsel or have you kind of just been kind of a great okay. listening ear? Well, initially, initially I thought that I wanted to be a counselor and so I did go back to school in my late 30s and I started just going to general classes and then I went actually into seminary and I studied in uh, the spiritual arena instead of the academic arena. And then um, I was ordained a minister and I used that. I thought, well, if I can do their hair, I can certainly officiate their wedding ceremonies. So I can actually officiate a wedding ceremony and I've done uh, memorial services How's for them. How's that for How's one that? stop shopping? Right. You get your, you get your uh, the officiant that gets you married. Right. She does your hair and your makeup. Right. <laughs> All in one shot. All in one shot. Well, before and I let so, you go, I have yeah. to read one other little snippet because they are short and it's just another really great example of okay. um, what you've written. She says, Laura called today and said she had bad news and then really bad news. When I asked her to give me the really bad news she answered I have to cancel my hair appointment for Wednesday next week okay I responded and what's the bad news she replied the bad news is that the doctor thinks my, I have uterine cancer and she wants me to have a hysterectomy on Wednesday but maybe <laughs> I could still have the hysterectomy on Monday and make my appointment on Wednesday now that's a loyal client <laughs> so this is a great read and I would definitely recommend this to so many people and you know Thank your you. local author and so good luck to you as this Thank you. flies off the store shelves it's available. Thank you. Thank you, Hilda. Okay. Available at Amazon.com. And of course, we're going to link you up to all the places. You can even ask your Barnes & Noble or your local borders to, to order it for you.